Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to display a table full of images which are stored in a database. And that's not exactly accurate, but it's the best I can do in a sentence. So I'm going to show you how this all fits together. So this page right here is going to have a gallery of images on it basically when we're done. And those images are going to come from this table. Right? So in the background somewhere there's a table. I'm showing you what it looks like. It's called YT Images. The table has four fields. It's got like primary key, it's got a title, it's got a cat, and it's got an image. Images are not stored in the table. Instead all we store is the name of the image. Now the actual images themselves are stored in this folder. Right? So there's this, this files folder. That's the uh, folder that I'm writing all my code out of and then I created a folder in there called uploads and in that uploads folder I've got some images. Now you might notice that there's five rows in this table and there's more than five images in this folder. Not all of them are stored in that table. I was just messing around earlier but what you will see like that image for example is a reference to that image right there. So for in this table we're simply just storing the names of the images. Alright so now I think you understand everything you need to understand and now I can go get into the code. And so I've already done some of this, so let's talk about the SQL first. So I've got this simple SQL block up here. I've got a require script. I've got a very simple query. Select star from images, more or less, and result, right? So whatever I get from this query, I'm gonna be storing as result. Now if I wanted to make this a little more specific, I could put a where clause in there, but I'm not even saying a where clause. I just wanna display everything which is in that table. So this, uh, is going to be very similar to a process I've done many times before and I even have a couple videos on it and that's just the process of creating a dynamic table using PHP. So my recipe for that, I'm going to walk you through it. So what I always do is I open up an opening table tag and then I give myself some space and I close the table tag. That's not going to happen, that's not a repetition process, right? This kind of thing right here, that's literally just, there's going to be an opening tag and a closing tag. No repetition. Now the internal parts of the table, those are going to be carried out through repetition. So I'm going to open up a PHP tag, I'm going to close PHP tag, and in here I'm going to have a little while loop. And the while loop is essentially going to draw all the uh, cells and the rows. So I'm going to say while uh, row, so I'm declaring a variable called row, and I'm setting it equal to my SQLI fetch ASOC, and I'm going to pass that, that result variable. I'll come back to that in a minute. If this seems like stuff that you've never seen before, you probably should watch some of my previous videos, because this is exactly the recipe I go through every time I draw a table dynamically. So basically, I've got this uh, while loop, and I'm creating this variable and assigning it um, for each iteration through. This function right here is calling that variable right there. So this is all related to the SQL query. Basically, it's going to fetch the uh, results of the query one row at a time. So now for the interesting part. Kind of what's going to happen here is each, row, each uh, iteration through this loop is going to create a pair of TDs with an image in it. But the other thing that needs to happen is the rows. So I'll show you how I like to deal with the rows. And what I like to do is create a counter. And I'm going to set it to 0. And then in here I'm going to write an if, and I'll say if i mod 3 is equal to 0, then that indicates the beginning of a new row. So I'm going to say echo a tr tag. Right, and so like just to kind of walk you through this, i starts off as 0. So the first time it jumps into this loop, it opens up a tr tag. That sounds about right. Now there's a more efficient way I could do this, but I'm going to, for demonstration's sake, have a different, have a completely independent if, which is not the smartest thing to do, but I'm more about illustrating concepts than being efficient. You know, if you're good at programming, you'll find an efficient way to do this. And so this is how I detect the end of a row. So if I mod i by 3 and I get 2, then that means that I basically have three images already, and I close the row, and I always like to increment my counter just in case, so I, so I don't forget. So that's how I handle the opening of rows, and that's how I handle the closing of rows. This, uh, I, for, I should have mentioned that I'm going for like a three column format. If I wanted, wanted four columns, those would be fours, and that would be a three. Those would be the only things that change. And so those are in ifs, like so the, sometimes that happens, sometimes that happens. The thing that happens every time is like I said, uh, we spit out a pair of TD tags. That's every row produces one of those. And in these TD tags, we have an, uh, an image. 
and images have an SRC attribute and they also have an alt attribute. And so we're going to use the results of our query here to fill in those two fields. So for the SRC, this is something I always like to do in between those back ticks. I'm going to do curly braces and then in there I'm going to say uh, row and the name of the field I want is uh, IMG. I believe that's what it is. If you're not sure like what that field was called, well, it corresponds to something that was in this table back here, right? I'm referring to that field. That's the name of the image. And I'm gonna do something real similar right here. I'm gonna break into curly braces again, and I'm gonna say row, and now I'm looking for the title field. Now this isn't gonna work, right? Because I'm saying that that image is here, but I need to point it into that uploads folder. Right, so notice that inside of those back ticks, I, I prepended the name of the folder because that's the name of the file, but that's the name of the folder. And so now if I save this thing and uh, reload this page, let's see how it works. I think it's going to be hideous, but I think we'll be close. Hey, that's promising, right? But the issue is you're like, what in the heck? How come there's not three columns? Well, there is. It just looks ridiculous. So you realize pretty quickly when you allow users to upload non-standardized images, you got to apply some CSS to them to give them like a uniform width or something like that. So I created a little CSS rule. You can't see it, but what I'm going to do is for these images, I'm going to give them a class of a... Uh, I believe the rule was gallery. This just gives things a width of 200. And you're going to see this thing looks like way less of a train wreck after we standardize the width. I mean, I don't know, right? Does it look weird? Sure, it looks weird. It looks weird because there's no space between the images and they're not uniform in height. But you can see that's kind of the idea we're going for, um, right? We're not cropping any images or resizing them, really. So that right there is displaying six images, which were stored in this table right here. I think there's there's six, but uh, this query hasn't been updated. So that right there is how you dynamically display images from a table. So this up here was just some pretty straightforward SQL, and then this right here is just that process of creating a dynamic table. Just the only difference is instead of text, we're we're putting an image in there. And it's a little bit messy because we had some paths to deal with and we had some alt text and a little bit of CSS, but ultimately it's a just application of things that probably have already messed around with a bit before if you've experimented with PHP and SQL before. So hopefully this helps you to understand how to create a gallery dynamically in PHP. Thanks for watching.